tunggang wakas Ikaw ang sandigan Hinugis ng iyong kamay Larawan mo sa aking buhay Tanda ng iyong pagmamahal Kaya't sabihin mo Good morning everyone. Welcome, welcome to our online worship service here in Victory Pasig, Estancia, wherever you are. We're glad that you are worshiping with us. Regardless of our circumstances, our situation, God is still worthy to be praised. And you know that the church is not the building. It's not the organization, it's us, it's you and me, it's the people magnifying our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And so join me as we pray before we worship Him through song. Lord Jesus, we'll lift up your name. Our great hope will lift up the name of the God who is with us, Jesus. We fix our eyes on you. Lord, help us to set aside the things that burden us. Allow us, Lord God, to focus on you, to worship you, to lift up your name in our households, in our hearts, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Worship natin si God.
God is faithful. Our God is faithful. Sing a new song to our God. For in Him we have overcome. Praise the anthem of our love. Hallelujah, hope has come.
has measured the waters in the palm of his hand and knows every detail who was marked of the heavens with outstretched arms the great I am who has measured the waters in the palm of his hand it's only you Jesus, we worship you. We lift you up. The sovereign, victorious King who has overcome it all. Lord, we put our hope in you. Lord, encourage us, strengthen us for those who are weary, for those who are jaded and callous, for those who are sick right now. 
Lord, you are the God who is sovereign. You are the God who is in control of our nation. Church, right now we're going to pray for our nation. You know what's been going on? And as a church, as the people of God, we're not, go we're not going to allow all these circumstances to be magnified in our nation. Instead, we would lift up the name that is above every name, and that is Jesus. Amen. Join me in prayer. Lord Jesus, be magnified in our nation. We lift you up. Lord, right now there is fear, there is panic within our nation. There is sickness. Several people unwell. Several people just shrinking back in fear. Lord, right now, Holy Spirit, I pray that you sweep across our nation. I pray that you touch the hearts of your people. I pray that you would allow us, Lord God, to humble ourselves, to seek you, to cry out for our nation. Lord, we ask that you would be magnified in not our circumstances, not our emotions, but we would choose to magnify the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the name above all names, and that is you, Lord Jesus. We magnify you in our midst and in our nation, in our hearts. In your powerful name, Jesus. Amen and amen. Now, church, as we continue to unite in praying for our nation, I want to invite you. We're going to be praying for the next two Thursdays, April 1 and April 8 at 7 p.m. We're going to be posting links so we could pray together. Sama-sama tayo, join us. So we could all lift up our nation to God. This is the cry of our hearts. And in fact, hindi lang po during that time online na magasama-sama tayo on those two Thursday evenings. But we are believing that as His people, we are called to pray wherever we are. That's why earlier this week, uh, all the pastors, the staff of our church has set our alarms for 7.14 a.m. and 7.14 p.m. Why? Because we've set those two times, <laughs> two specific times in the day to lift up our nation to God. That's our heart. Our heart is to be able to pray for our nation. So bakit 7.14? We pick that because it's symbolic. It's, it's tied to our heart as to why we're doing this. See, in 2 Chronicles 7.14, it says here, If my people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray, seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. Church, this is our call as His people. It's to lift our nation up. It's to humble ourselves. It's to seek God. Join us, 714. Ngayon pa lang, ngayon pa lang ha. Set mo na, kunin mo yung phone mo. Pero kung nanonood ka sa phone mo, mamaya mo nagyawin. Okay, mamaya, set mo. 714 AM and 714 PM. We're gonna do that. We're gonna lift up our nation to God. Amen? We are victory. We exist to honor God and make disciples. Again, thank you for joining us this Sunday morning to worship God, to magnify Jesus in our lives, in our nation, in our hearts. And so as we continue to honor Him and seek Him, uh, we're going to be worshiping Him some more in a while. But uh, how many of you know, I'm sure, medyo, hindi naman medyo, baka yung iba sa inyo alam nyo to, that this is also, today is also Palm Sunday. And so we want to invite you to go through a eight-day devotional with us, okay? So meron po tayo yan. you can download it off from www.victory.org.ph slash holyweek. 2021. So stay tuned para sa mga link sa ating social media so that you could download that devotional and journey with us throughout this week. And as we continue to worship God through our giving, allow me to read 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verses 1 and 2. We want you to know, brothers, about the grace of God that has been given among the churches of Macedonia, for in a severe test of affliction, their abundance of joy and their extreme poverty have overflowed in a wealth of generosity on their part. Now, whenever we give to God, remember that our attitude is very, very important. Our heart is of, 
of utmost importance for God. Regardless of our situation, we can honor Him with our giving, especially if our hearts are right before God. Let's pray. Lord, thank you. Lord, allow us to have the right heart every time we worship you with our finances. Allow us, Lord God, to always put you first. Allow us, Lord God, to always magnify you and worship you through the material possessions that you've entrusted to us. We worship you this time in Jesus' name. Amen. Again, because of what's happening, so wala po muna tayong tithe box na nilalagay sa ating facility. But do uh, consider going to our online platforms. Uh, we have different payment portals. And of course, uh, yung, mga giving, yung information natin on our online giving would always be there on our, on our website. So victory.org.ph slash give. So that would enable you to go uh, and give online to worship God. Now, as we continue to, to receive from Him, as we continue to be ministered by God this morning, let's all welcome Pastor Mark to receive this week's word from God. Okay. Magandang, magandang umaga po sa inyo lahat. We just want to welcome you here at uh, Victory Pasig in Estancia. As you all know, uh, the government has declared already that uh, we are on a seven-day ECQ uh, situation. And so, buti na lang po nag-decide po tayo beforehand na mag-go online, which we started last Sunday. And uh, what, what, whatever Pastor uh, RJ has mentioned is really very important. Alam niyo po, lalo na po itong uh, ano natin, ECQ natin. I think, let the church be the church, even at this moment, wherein we are going to stand in the gap for our nation. There's a uh, need for us, there's an urgency for us to stand in the gap towards what's happening to the whole world. And I believe part of the answer is the church. You and I have something to do, and that's why we need to rise up and answer the call of God as prayer intercessors, all right? We're going to ask God, the Bible says, God has given us the authority, all right? He has given us the keys of the kingdom. Whatever we bound in heaven will be bind in earth. Whatever we bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And so we're going to ask God that truly His healing, His power will manifest over our lives, amen? Again, you sinasabi po ni Pastor RJ, coming from Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, we would like to encourage everyone, okay, to make sure that we all have a prayer alarm. 7.14 po yan, maga at gabi. Magpe-pray po tayo. Kami po, nag-pray na kami. Every time kami po ni Rizel, yung mixes ko, nag-pray kami. Kagabi po, ganun din po yung ginagawa natin. So lahat po. And of course, itong pong darating na week, uh, you know, we've decided that last Thursday, we, we will have a, uh, a fasting day. And so we're gonna continue in the next two Thursdays. Okay, dalawang Thursday po. Please join us in our prayer meeting and we're all, we're all gonna be together humbling ourselves Seeking God's face, praying, and believing God that God will answer our prayers. Can you say amen? Ayos. Marami po salamat. At sa mga nanunod po ngayon, this morning, if there's any way we can be of service, that we could be of help to you, please make sure that you uh, contact us in our, in, our, in our webpage or in our phones. Make sure that if you are part of a victory group, tawagan niyo po yung victory group leaders niyo. I-contact nyo po kami. We'll be there for you and to support you. Whatever it is, prayer, whatever support that you could ask us, may the church be a blessing to you. So maraming maraming pong salamat. Okay? Wow, great. Thank you so much. Ayos. So papasalamat lang po tayo. Okay? Uh, ilan lang po kami dito sa center natin. Pero as we always say, the mission continues. Tuloy-tuloy po tayo. Okay? Next Sunday po, ang gagawin natin, wala po tayo rito. So dahil lockdown nga po, so, magre-recording po tayo sa aming mga bahay. So, thank you for sticking around and be part of our worship service this morning. Well, praise God. Well, guess what? As Pastor RJ mentioned, uh, ito pong this Sunday is Palm Sunday. And this is our third week of our series, Tanan, Salt, and Light. And so, this is going to be a very exciting topic that we are, you know, studying and getting through uh, with the book of Isaiah. And so today, I'd like to ask you to open your Bibles with me as we proceed to the preaching of God's Word. 
Ayan. Let me read to you Isaiah chapter 11, verses 1 to 5. Then we're going to jump to verse 10. Okay? Isaiah 11, starting in verse 1, then till 5, and then we're going to jump to verse 10. Here's what the Word of God says. There shall come forth a shoot from the stump of Jesse, and a branch from his root shall bear fruit. And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, and his delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see, or decide disputes by what his ears hear, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. And he shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the bread of his lips. He shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt of his waist and faithfulness the belt of his loins. Verse 10. In that day, the root of Jesse who shall stand as a signal for the peoples of him, shall the nations inquire, and his resting place shall be glorious. This is the word of the Lord for us today and for the rest of the week. Let's pray today. Panginoon, marami pong salamat. Truly, you are a God who is sovereign. You are in control. And even as Pastor RJ prayed, that, Lord God, you will arrest the COVID-19 virus over the nation and the whole earth. Lord, we continue to cry out and declare that you are the answer in our situation. Even, Lord God, as we commemorate this Holy Week, may we encounter you through the preaching of your word. Lord, as we worship you in hearing your word, may we encounter you, Lord Jesus. And may we be transformed by the power of your word. Holy Spirit, we ask, even as we welcome you with us today, thank you that you are with us, for us, and you are working through us. Lord, every person who's watching and being part of this worship service, all of us here, this is not just watching a video. This is all part of us worshiping you as our God, and we worship you together as one church here in Victory Passing. We give you glory. In Jesus' name we pray, and everyone would say... Amen. Praise God. Ayos. Alam niyo po, last Sunday, uh, we really pr- appreciate Pastor Dr. June Escosar for uh, really preaching here last Sunday. Imagine, nag-preach po siya three services. Yung nine, yung one, at yung alas cinco. Kaya naman, ang tawag po namin kay Dr. Anastasio Escosar. Tawag po namin sa kanya, Sermonator. Kung kayo, kung, napari, kung napanood nyo at napakinggan nyo, grabe. Talagang kala po para ka na sa conference. And in fact, when he was here last Sunday, we have a little kind of uh, glitches. May mga konting problema tayo dito sa sound. Alam nyo po, parang, parang part siya ng team namin. Parang cool na cool lang siya. He was just here with us. Yung parang, he was trying also to give message online. And so parang he's really part of us. And uh, that's why he's really going to be part of us because he's going to be preaching here at Victory Pasig Estancia. Ayos. May sinabi po si Pastor June last Sunday. Sabi niya ganun, based on his preaching, God really hates injustices. God hates oppression. God hates those people who defraud. Those people who would take advantage. Those people who would malign <clears throat> Their own kind. Yung mga abusive. Grabe, kita po ni Lord. Wala pong makakawala. Okay, sa mata ng Diyos. Alam ni Lord yung nangyayari. And because of that, God has to expose them. And He has to give a word through the prophecy of the Scripture, through Isaiah, that truly, there will be judgment. There will be cursed. There will be destruction to those who would oppress, especially Regarding God's people. In chapter 10 of the book of Isaiah, God also judged this particular nation called the Assyrians. All right, the Assyrians, they were arrogant. All right, they were boastful. In fact, the king of Judah by the name of King Ahaz 
thought that they will align or allied with Assyria. But alam nyo, talagang binaliktad sila. Talagang inoppress po yung Judah, no? Kinalaban po sila. And because of that, things have changed. And because of the situation, you could see here the hand of God that truly God's heart is for His people. But if you sin against the will of God, where King Ahaz, as the king, the leader of the nation, led the whole people, God's people, to sin by giving into idolatrous uh, sin, guess what? The Lord was against them. And God has used the Assyrians to oppress them. But yet, the heart of God is against the oppressors. God was against the Assyrians. That's why if you take a look in chapter 11, there's a difference, talagang so extreme, there's a big contrast between chapter 10 and chapter 11, which describes the fall of Assyria in chapter 10. In fact, it says, Assyria will be like a great forest, cut down at the height of its power and never to rise again. Alam niyo po, maganda kay Isaiah. He would use imagery like the trees and forest. That's why going back to verse 1, sabi po ng Bible, There shall come forth a shoot from the stump of Jesse, and a branch from his roots shall bear fruit. Take note. A shoot from the stump of Jesse. Ang tanong po, ano po ba yung stump, di ba? Ano ba yung stump? Well, Here's what it is. It is the bottom part of a tree left from the ground after most of the trunk has fallen or been cut down. In other words, pag meron pong, ano po, meron pong puno, pag kinat yung po yun, kung ano po yung matitira, yung po yung stump. Okay? But yet, the Bible says, stump of Jesse. Who is Jesse? Well, Jesse is the son of Obed, the son of Boaz and Ruth. He was the father of eight children, eight sons, and the youngest of whom was David. Youngest. Ang tanong ko po sa inyo, sino po ba rito mga youngest? Mga bunso. Ako po, bunso po kamo. Parang, parang kay, ano, kay David po, ang dami po namin. Well, pitok po kami, ako po yung youngest. Alam nyo po, pag youngest ka, lalo na pag wala si mami si daddy, ikaw yung batukan, utusan. Ikaw yung, ikaw yung parang parati kang nilalamangan. Okay. Kakaiba po pag youngest ka, lalo na pag wala yung mamit daddy mo. Ganyan po na experience ko, kaya buti na lang na born again ako at pinag-finorgive ko na yung mga, mga kapatid ko. <laughs> okay. Kawawa talaga ako. Okay. But nevertheless, Jesse was the father of David. And it shows here that out of that stump, a family line of David himself, or Jesse, the father of David, will grow a shoot and a new branch will spring up and bear fruit from that old root. It actually refers to Judah. God wants to get rid of them, but because of his compassion towards Judah, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to withhold my judgment, but yet I'm going to raise up someone from your line, your lineage, who would be a greater <clears throat> than the original tree, one who will bear much fruit. This is the promised Messiah, the fulfillment who will someday be a king. Alam nyo, sa totoo lang, the whole world, the whole world is looking for a righteous king or a righteous leader. We are desperate for leadership. And the kind of leader that we want to see are men and women who will rise up and who will serve God that there's no agenda rather than to honor God and, pur and do His purpose and serve the people. Sad to say, seasons change, times have gone. Until today, we have never seen a righteous leader. My friends, the good news is, out of the prophecy that Isaiah mentioned, the good news is that out of that stump from Jesse, in fact, later on in verse 10, it says there, the root of Jesse is the same and the one and only, the promised Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ. Can you say amen? Parang tumisigaw ako dito ah. 
Pwede pang, can you give me a little bit of a monitor? Ayan. <coughs> Ayos. Okay, excuse me. Yon. Uh, pwede, pwede. Okay na, okay na. <coughs> Thank you, Lord. Galing. Now, here's the point. Jesus is the Messiah, the promised Messiah, has come to be the righteous king who will deliver and lead his people. My friends, people are desperate for leadership. But made no mistake. God saw the cry of people's hearts. We look to Christ as the righteous leader, and he's not just a savior, but he's the king, the leader of the nation, who will bring lasting change. Can you say amen? amen. Now, let me share to you three descriptions of Jesus as the righteous king based on Isaiah's prophecy. In the book of Isaiah 11, the scripture that we read, let me share to you who Jesus is as far as his word, the prophecy is concerned. Number one, are you ready? Jesus, the righteous king, is clothed with the spirit and the fear of the Lord. Jesus, the righteous king, is clothed with the spirit and the fear of the Lord. Verse 2 says, and the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. The spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, and the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. Verse 3, and his delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. Jesus was the promised king who will rule with wisdom and might because of the spirit of God. Rest upon him. And twice it mentioned, he will rest in the fear of the Lord. Alam niyo po, when many leaders today would serve for the purpose of power, for the purpose of gaining wealth, for the purpose of their own benefit. That's why yung iba ayaw bumitaw sa, <laughs> sa power, di ba? Gusto nila, yung <laughs> sila pa rin, wala nang, wala nang katapusan. And yet, you know, that's an example wherein, you know, they're just looking for themselves. They're just basically thinking, hey, look, but I'm not going to let go of power in this position. And sometimes that is the problem. A lot of leaders today started right. But down the road, they gave into the temptation of having self-promotion and trying to think that they're better compared to others. But my friends, gone are the days. The problem with Judah is that and Israel, they did not rule out the chief concern that the reason why they were there, especially the leaders, is simply to obey and please and glorify God. Well, guess what? God has to fulfill the promise that there is one, not for political reason or for, for the might of a certain nation, but basically God is going to raise up such a leader, a ruler, a king who will come to serve and bring righteousness. Are you here with me? One thing about Christ as a leader is this. The Spirit of God rests and dwells upon Him. If we're going to look and ask God for the kind of leader, next year, magkakaroon po tayo na eleksyon, we're going to ask God, Lord, give us godly leaders who will move with compassion, who will move not in their own, their own agendas, but for the glory and the purpose of God who will move with such wisdom that comes from the Holy Spirit. Let me quote what Charles, Charles Spurgeon says. Wisdom is the right to use of knowledge. To know it's not to be wise. To know is not to be wise. Many men know a great deal and are all the greater fools for it. But to know how to use knowledge is to have wisdom. Bishop Mani would say, Wisdom is the application of knowledge. My friends, it is not enough for us to be educated. We need the wisdom that comes from God as we serve Him, as we portray and give our lives to God and show what righteous leadership is. And because of wisdom that comes from the Holy Spirit, He was clothed with power and the fear of God is upon Him. You know, I'm grateful that in our time today, we have someone who was elected to be one of the youngest mayors, I would say, in our land. 
And that is our own brother, okay, who grew up in Kids Church, who's part of us in Victory, none other than our own mayor, Mayor Vico Soto. Alam niyo po, nung uh, katatapos niya lang mag oath taking may nagtanong sa kanya, sabi, what's, what's the kind of leader do we need right now? Sabi nung media, ito po yung sabi niya. He said, it is important, okay, I think it's really important for us to have leaders with the fear and the love of God. Can you imagine a young guy who's walking the talk with fullness of conviction would say, you know the kind of leader that we need? Men who would fear God. Men who would love God. And in, he's an example of this. You know, I have a friend. Barkada po ako dito lang malapit. Sa may, uh, dito sa clubhouse natin. No? Malapit dito sa Pasig. Diyan siya nag-office. Nagkwento siya. Sabi niya ganun, pare, si Vico, di ba nag-church sa inyo? Sabi, oh yeah. You know, dun sa parangay namin, okay, may ginagawa doon project ng local government. Tapos pumunta siya. Tapos nandun niya, sinusupervise niya. So tinitingnan niya ganun, sabi niya. Pero alam mo, tagtanong kami, sabi niya, may proyekto niyo to, ba't hindi niyo, ba't di ho kayo maglagay ng karatula dyan at sabihin niyo na this is the project of Mayor Vico Soto. Alam mo, sabi daw ni Mayor, ito, pagkasabi niya sa akin, ha? alam mo, sabi ni Mayor sa amin, pare, sabi niya sa akin, ba't ko gagawin yun? Eh, yung ginastos dito, hindi ka naman pera yan, pera, kaba ng bayan ng Pasig yan. Ba't ko maglalagay ng pangalan ko doon na ang panggagastos ko, yung pondo ng Pasig? I'm not gonna do that. I don't need, I don't need to do that. Alam mo, sabi, pare, sa totoo lang, totoong tao. Can you imagine that? My friend who's a, Anyway, <laughs> would testify about this guy. And so praise God. And you know, are we, are we rejoicing about that? We have a mayor who is godly, who had a fear of God. And that's what we need at this point. Proverbs 9 verse 10 says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And the knowledge of the Holy One is insight. My friends, let's pray for our government leaders that they will be filled with wisdom. Let's pray later on. That as a salt and light that God called us, that we ourselves will be an example of what is to fear the Lord so that we will have wisdom. Amen? Secondly, Jesus, the righteous king, will judge in righteousness and justice. Will judge in righteousness and justice. Sabi po ng verse 3, Second part, he shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide disputes by what his ears hear. But with righteousness, everybody say righteousness. But with righteousness, he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. And she, he shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the bread of his lips, he shall kill the wicked. For righteousness shall be the belt of his waist and faithfulness the belt of his loins. Jesus is the righteous ruler who will judge and bring righteousness and just, justice for the oppressed. My friends, I want you to understand all this oppression and injustices. God has seen it. And God is a God of justice. He will fight for the needy, for the oppressed, for the poor ones. He will fight for you. Anything that happened to you, that somebody violated you and experienced injustice, I want to assure you, Jesus, a righteous king, will rule and judge with righteousness and judgment. That is why Jesus would just perfectly, why? He would not rely on his five senses, but he would read people's hearts by the standard of absolute truth and discernment. Kaya nga po si Lord, tinitignan niya yung sitwasyon. Hindi siya basta, you know, he's not moved by what people are saying, the media is saying, what the people, even the church is saying. <clears throat> he will be, basically make decisions based on righteousness. And he will do this. He will look at people's hearts and know the condition of people. And he will discern what it is. In John chapter 5, verse 30, the Bible says, For his judgment will always be perfect, 
Why? It's perfectly righteous because he seeks to please the Father. Sana ganun din po tayo. Pag may mga decision po tayo na gagawin. Number one po. Ano nyo po kung ano yung will ni God? Ito po. It's all coming from this kind of posture. Lord, will this decision bring honor to you? Lord, will this decision please the Father? Will it please you? Ganun lang kasimple. Hindi yung gusto ni nanay, gusto ni tatay, hindi yung ujok nung sitwasyon. Pag magdi-decide po tayo, di mo kailangan nga mag-pray. Tanong mo lang, Lord, will this honor you? Will this please you? Kung hindi, definitely that's not God's will. Because Jesus delights in the fear of the Lord. He has wrapped righteousness and faithfulness sash around His waist. And so, imagine righteousness and faithfulness is part of Him. Why? Because Jesus is the righteous ruler who will bring righteousness and justice for the oppressed. Can you say amen? His judgments are always correct because He's able to discern the heart of man. You know, it is very fearful to be, to be picked as one of those who will give judgment. I remember some situations in the past where I was, I was asked to be part of a certain committee group where we're going to make a decision based on a certain uh, ruling where it will create such cat- catastrophic on the life of the people that we're trying to judge. And being part of the committee, but I begin to realize, wow, it's a fearful thing. Kasi hindi basta-basta. Kasi titingnan mo lahat, not just all the facts, but seeing the heart of the person. Tama ba talaga to? Lord, you sinasabi mad- itong tao na to, tama ba yung mga pinagsasabi niya? When we started to hear all the signs as if, para teka muna, parang kakaiba, parang hindi yata. Ganun, you know what? Sometimes we have to ask God for for wisdom, and even the time that you already have a decision, as we, the whole group, converge and we will try to say, This is the verdict. Sometimes we still have to hold and break. Bakit kasi nga, alam mo, I begin to realize, ibang klase pala pag nandudun ka na. Kaya nga pag napili kang part of a juror, di ba, dun sa lalo na sa US, di ba, the judge is the one who facilitates, pero the one who will make the decision are the jurors. It's really important for the wisdom of God. To be upon them, upon them. That's why I'm going to say, your decision will either make you or break you. In this pandemic, it's hard to make decisions, isn't it? We don't just make decisions based on our need or our want. We make decisions based on what is to honor the Lord. Looking back recently, Nung nag-decide po kami na mag-online last Sunday, alam nyo po ba, three days prior to that Sunday, we called for a meeting. Si Pastor Paolo po nagpatawag ng meeting at pinag-usapan po namin. Ano ba gagawin natin? Kasi nga parang, you know, we want to be sensitive with the hearts of people. People are starting to come, but yet we have this increase of the cases. There's a surge of, di ba, in, uh, in, in BGC, dito rin sa Pasig, almost lahat eh. And you know what? We, we try to, give our own reasons, and true enough, you know, we sought the Lord and really asked God, hindi lang pa kami nag-decision based on, kasi nga, pandemic, talagang, nag, talagang we get the counsel of our leaders, and finally, we made the decision. We let, we just, you know, committed to, to the senior pastors, who is the one leading the, the, the congregations, and that's why we come to a decision that I thank God that we made the decision, miskin mag, Meron tayong konting glitches, okay lang, tuloy-tuloy pa rin. Bakit? Because God truly have come and truly help us pull off with our service last Sunday. My friends, wrong decisions, false judgment, and decep- deception will come when we decide to judge based in our own senses without looking and having discernment and looking the hearts of people at the same time honoring and pleasing God. Can you say amen? amen. Mag-iingat po tayo sa mga pinapanood natin. Kung kayo po ay uh, every night na lang puro Netflix, 
at yung mga ginagawa natin, puro online, social media, tapos less of God's Word. How can God give you wisdom and all the things that gets into your head are all those news out there, those entertainment, it's not gonna help you have discernment and wisdom. Amen? Again, the Messiah, the righteous King, will have the power to execute His righteous rule. Why? His reign will be characterized by justice, by truth, and righteousness. Last but not the least, Jesus, the righteous King, will rule over the nations to bring salvation and peace. Let me say that again. Jesus, the righteous King, will rule over the nations to bring salvation and peace. In Isaiah chapter 11, verse 10, in New Living Translation, sabi ng Bible, In that day, the heir of David's throne will be a banner of salvation. Again, banner of salvation to all the world. The nations will rally to him, and the land where he lives will be a glorious place. My friends, the ones mentioning here is Jesus. Jesus is the one who's going to grant salvation to all people. And he's the banner of salvation. Nations will be saved because of Christ. Nations will be delivered because of what Christ has done for us through the gospel, his life, his ministry, what he did for us on the cross. This week, where, you know, people sometimes commemorating his suffering, but thanks be to God, it's over. He resurrected and experienced life eternal to those who put their trust in him shall not be perished, but shall have eternal life. The good thing about this promise is this. It's not just the Jews, but it goes out to all nations, all the Gentiles, all the nations aside from the Jews. Kaya nga pasalamat po kami. I really thank God personally because our name, we are, our name is Every Nation Ministries. We are an Every Nation Church. Kaya nga, every nation, tandaan po natin. Tuloy-tuloy po yung ginagawa natin. Until there's one person who's not yet saved. We have not done our job yet. To those of you watching, whether you like it or not, God has called us to be part of every nation. Victory. Hindi lang tayo nagre-reach out dito sa Pasig, pati di sa mundo. Yung mga nasa opisina nyo, yung mga nasa campus, yung mga nasa community natin, sa barangay. Ito po kung sino si Lord. Jesus is the righteous king who will rule the nations to bring salvation and peace. And then IV sabi dito, in that day the root of Jesse, again, that is Christ, will stand as the banner for the peoples. The nations will rally to him and resting place will be glorious. Now sabi po dung verse 10, in that day. Ano po ba? What was the word of God refers to here? In that day. Well, let's backtrack a little bit. He, it, was refer, it, uh, it refers to verse 6, 7, and 8. Sabi po ng Bible dito. Very interesting. Kasi nga, Jesus would come to bring salvation and peace. Ano ba yun? What is the picture? And I hope this will encourage you and give you hope. Sabi sa verse 6. The wolf shall dwell with the lamb. Hmm. And the leopard shall lie down with the young goat. Mm. And the calf and the lion and the fattened calf together. Mm. And the little child shall lead them. Whoa, 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 wait a minute. Tama pa ito binabasa natin? Ito po yung sinasabi ni Isaiah. Magkakatutuo po ito. You know, there's a, a principle that says already but not yet. Jesus has already come. And he's propagating diba? his life, the gospel through the nations, but yet the work is not yet done. That's why the Lord is using, using us to advance his kingdom, to bring forth salvation and to bring forth his peace. And this literally will happen. Verse 7 says, The cow and the bear shall graze, and the young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox, not his nemesis or his enemies. And the nursing child shall play over the hole of the cobra. And the wind child shall put his hand on the ladders. Then, look at this picture. Lord, is this really true? It's going to come. Why is that? Because 
God is the Prince of Peace. He's the ruler of the nation. And he wants to fulfill the promise to restore the nation under his kingdom and under his lordship. Well, that's, there's peace and eternal peace. Can you say amen? amen? In that day, there'll be no more crimes, no more killings, no more oppression, no more injustices, no more chaos. It is only possible when Jesus, the righteous king, will come to rule the nations. Can you say amen? But it should start from us. It should start from you and I. As long as we are alive, as long as we live, this promise stands still. Hallelujah. This is the promise of a complete restoration and peace. Hindi pa tapos si Lord. Yes, basta save sila lahat. Pero hindi, may restoration work, may reformation gagawin ni Lord. Alam niyo, nanunod po ako ng National Geographic, ang title ng National Geographic about animals, the clash of the, 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 the clash of the clans. Yeah, the clash of the clans. Ibig sabihin, yung mga ayinas versus the lions, yung mga, yung mga lions versus the tiger, hindi mo sila pwedeng pagsama. Pero in this picture, there will be peace. And even the child can play in the holes of the cobra. Think about that. That they'll be playing together. What a picture. My friends, the Lord is the righteous king. He has, he has come and he will come again. But before that, the Lord is going to use us. There's a work of salvation, restoration, peace, harmony, and unity to bring all nations, all people and tribe and all race together as one where Jesus is the ruler of the nation. Why? He's the King of kings and the Lord of all lords. Can you say amen? amen. My friends, it is exciting. It is exciting. Again, number one, I want to say, Jesus is the righteous king. Three descriptions. Jesus is the righteous king. Clothed with the spirit and the fear of the Lord. Secondly, Jesus, the righteous king, will judge in righteousness and justice. Thirdly, Jesus, the righteous king, will rule over the nations to bring salvation and peace. In conclusion and application. In verse 9 in ESV, Saberito, They shall not hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain. For the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Woo! This is a prophetic picture. There will be no oppressors. No more nations, predatory nations like the Assyrians. They will no longer hurt and destroy God's people. The righteous king will bring transformation. It is the promise that God wants to do here on earth so that the knowledge of the Lord will be full as the waters cover the sea. My friends, that will only be possible if we are to make Christ known. This will only be possible if people will encounter and know Christ. Ganun yan. Wala po mangyayari kung tayo hindi po tayo gagalaw. It's time for the church to pray. It's time for the church to have compassion. It's time for the church to preach the gospel, to make disciples, to train leaders, to plant churches, to reach out to the lost and the nations of the world. Can you say amen? In Isaiah 11 verse 10, in New Living Translation, sabi po dito, in that day, the heir of David's throne will be a banner of salvation in all the world. The nations will rally to him, and the land where he lives will be glorious place. How do we move from here, my friends? Victory passing. Estancia, kapasigan, at lahat po nanunood sa atin. I want to say this. As the salt and light, we are to make Christ known by going to all the people in the nations of the gospel. Again, as salt and light, we are to make Christ known by going to all people and the nations with the gospel. We have a message. There will be power. There will be transformation. 
There will be a glorious day that will take place. But we are to move. We are to be the church. And we as the salt and light, we are to make Christ known. Going to all lost people, wherever you're at, with your families, offices, in your communities, in the corporate world, wherever you are, you go out there and reach out those people with the gospel. Can you say amen? That's number one. Second, in application, Proverbs 9 verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And the knowledge of the Holy One is insight. The fear of the Lord. You want wisdom, my friends? You really want wisdom? Type it down, yes. I want the wisdom of God. Here's the catch. Here's the caveat. The fear of the Lord. Second, as a salt and light, we desire and choose the fear of the Lord. As a salt and light, in response to Jesus, a righteous king, the ruler of nations, who will judge with righteousness and peace and justice, the one who has given us the promise, my friends, we are to make Christ known by going to all the people and the nations with the gospel. As a salt and light, we desire and choose the fear of the Lord. Amen. I'd like to end with a word of prayer today. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Lord, we are honored. We are humbled. It's a pleasure, Lord. That truly, you're the one who chose us. Lord, hindi po kami ang pumili sa inyo. Kayo po ang pumili sa amin. Dinadalangin ko po, Panginoon, ang bawat isa sa mga nanunood, kami po dito sa center, that we will not miss your word, that we will struggle and just bother us, Lord, this week with what we heard today. Lord, thank you. A lot of people are frustrated, disappointed, but we look unto you as the righteous Lord, righteous King, as a leader of our families, our nation, our church. And Lord, today, we dedicate ourselves to you. Lord, we are part of this promise that truly you want to see transformation, reformation, righteousness, peace, unity, salvation. With the power of the gospel, may we be the salt and light who will make you known Go to the lost people, even the nations, with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And yet, Lord, as a salt and light, we desire and choose the fear of the Lord. Not wisdom, but the fear of the Lord. We're not going to look into wisdom as the, the desire of our hearts, but it is the fear of God. Lord, I'm asking you, Holy Spirit, pour out your spirit within us once again. Create the fear of God, Lord. Create righteousness, purity, and holiness in our minds, in our hearts, within our soul. I'm asking you, Lord, that you begin to move. Even in this pandemic, Lord, maraming salamat na gagamitin niyo po kami sa mga tao na nangangailangan ng salita mo ng gospel. So, Lord, I pray that you move mightily by using us by the power of your Holy Spirit because of the gospel. We give you glory in the highest praise. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone would say, come on now. Amen and amen. If you're watching today, all right, and you're not part of a group yet, this is the moment. Lalo na ito pong pandemic, lockdown na naman po tayo. Please write down. Ano may susulat natin? Connect. Okay. I want to be part. Just write down there. Connect. Help me to be connected with you. So please do write it down. We're going to call you. And again, uh, this week, if you need us we'll, to pray for you, to minister to you, make sure that you reach us. Amen? So praise God. I'd like to call once again Pastor RJ to close our service today. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. All right, let's pray. Lord, thank you for the word that we've received today. Lord, allow us, Lord, to, to just ponder on that word from Isaiah this week as we 
uh, reflect on the gospel as we reflect of uh, what you've done for us on the cross, especially this week being Holy Week. We pray that you would journey with us. In your name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you, church. We hope to see you again next week.